my hope is that this conversation sort of has you feeling and reflecting on why do you create content? What are you inspired to say and what are you curious about? Hey friends, welcome to Voice and Impact, an honest podcast about the journey of entrepreneurship. We're not here to tell you how to live your life. We're here to have real conversations about real things. My name is Adam and I'm so grateful you're here with us. Okay, so I'm gonna dive into a concept about content that I think is a little bit different than the status quo. I mean, I don't know about for you, but for me, early on in my process of creating content, it felt a little abstract, right? Like it felt like I really needed to think about, hmm, what kind of content am I gonna make? And it didn't necessarily feel inspired and it, it just, it wasn't a fluent process for me. It was uncomfortable. And so as I continued down my content creating journey, I learned a lot about a different modality, a different way to look at it, a different way to think about it. That result of that journey for me and that those thinkings was really embracing this idea that I'm gonna talk with you about today. And that is the concept, you are the content. Your real-time lessons, your real-time musings, your real-time experience, your story, all of those things are, are components of content. Now, I'm gonna break this down into a couple of sections. First, we're gonna talk about why are we making content in the first place? Sort of the mindset associated with that. So we're gonna talk about that content isn't the same for everybody. The process of cre creating content isn't the same for everybody. Not everyone's the same, so context matters. Then we're gonna talk about, well, if you think about content, it's a process of value exchange. Everybody wants to receive value. All content creators want to be valuable. The question sort of becomes, well, what is value? And how do we create a value exchange between us and our audience? And then I'm gonna to talk to you about or share my five-step process to creating authentic content regularly. Content's one of those things that when we get to it, we arrive at a point where it's relevant for consistency to be there. And so the question becomes, well then how do I create content that feels authentic to me, sort of at a bigger scale? How do I build those production processes and whatnot? And that's what we're gonna talk about is my production processes and five steps on how to create authentic content regularly. Let's dive into this. Let's start with why make content in the first place. And really when it comes to human behavior, there are really only two ways to motivate behavior. There's externalized motivation in this context for content that might feel like pressure. I'm an entrepreneur and I have to make content. And then on the opposite side, there's intrinsic motivation. That's sort of inward out. I have something important to say and I'm inspired to share it. It's different. Don't know about you, but for me, early on in that process, it was very externalized. I felt a lot of pressure that like, ah, if I'm running a business, I need to make content. No one likes doing what they think they have to. No one likes doing what they're told to do, right? Or at least I don't. Maybe you love it, I don't know. We face pressure in this process and let's break down that pressure a little bit. First and foremost, one of the things we experience is when we make a piece of content, it didn't get reach. So then it's like, gosh, I just put all this effort into this thing. Is what I said even valuable? Like we fall into that, right? We feel like it needs to be done a certain way, right? How many pieces of content do you come across your feed where it's like, use this magical sound and your next video is gonna go viral or five quick tips about this, right? There's all these sorts of, of, of structured pieces that we see in content, dancing videos and everything in between, right? And so we can feel pressure that it needs to be done a certain way. We might feel insecure about our own ideas, unsure, unclear. I know one of the things that I experience on this all the time is I, uh, in, in my, the, my tick, my sort of way of revealing that I feel that way is I always say, oh, I went on one of my spiels and that's an insecurity on my end of like, not feeling as though what I just said made sense or is valuable. And so sometimes that creates a situation of pressure because it's like I'm making content. Do I need to feel 100% confident in everything? I don't feel 100% confident, so why am I sharing it? That's for me. It can be time consuming, right? It can be a very 
expensive process when it comes to how much time we're investing into it, especially as we're learning and systematizing. It's not necessarily something as an entrepreneur that can affect the bottom line right away. In the service industry, for example, I helped build a company called The Kitty Custodian, and you know, a simple Facebook post to announce a special or something may affect the bottom line right away or generate opportunities, sure, but when it comes to more of like a creating content that is more of the caliber of thought leadership or ideas, that doesn't necessarily affect the bottom line right away. We have to remember it's a long-term game and we'll, we'll dive more into that. But let's, let's really face each of these elements of pressure that we that we experience in the content creating process so not getting any reach so like here's an example this is a video that i made um, and at this particular point i was doing it by myself i don't think i had a media team yet and look 49 views Woo! yeah really really affecting my bottom line really making a difference well uh, it's something that we need to accept that your value isn't possible to be captured in a single piece of content, right? Yet somehow, because I feel like the algorithm gods only gave me 49 views on this piece of content, I might find myself feeling, oh, well, shit, maybe what I don't have to say isn't, it doesn't matter anyway. Maybe nobody wants to hear it, so why am I putting in the effort? And that's where I gotta remind ourselves. Like we can't use these individual pieces of content as a unit of measurement of self-worth. It doesn't make sense. Your value as a being, as a presence on this planet, cannot be captured in a single piece of content or really any piece of content, right? When we arrive there and we get to the point where it's like, yeah, but I am feeling that, I do still. Then we have to curiously and openly ask, why am I seeking this validation? What sort of wound or insecurity is present that is causing me to feel like my ideas aren't worthy in this context? Something to consider. And then there's the infamous content itself is supposed to be done a certain way, right? Like here's all these crazy dance videos, you know, here's the top five ways to go viral because that's the goal. We want to go viral for whatever reason. Everybody's talking about it all the time, this course is. But then for me, when I'm making a piece of content, it's very intentional. And my aim is to be genuinely valuable to the individual in which has crossed my attention or I have crossed their attention. And so for me, what's more valuable? Two million people have seen it? or a hundred people have seen it, but 10 of those people actually changed their behavior, their thinking, or their feeling in a direction that feels meaningful and intentional for them. In other words, it actually impacted their life. If that is my mentality, if it impacts one person, and this is true early on, when I was creating content, I would tell my team all the time, if this content is only valuable to you, it's worth it for me. And so it requires humility, then we're comfortable with that 49 reach because maybe it helped that one person. And then imagine the emotional weight that could be lifted in that to not have to worry about how many people saw your content. Okay, and that leads us to being insecure of our own ideas. So there's a transcendence that has happened for me here that I would like to encourage you to think about. And that is as human beings, although we are human beings, not human doings, our culture has really encouraged us to view our self-worth by our action. We're very associated and identified with our action. I know I am. And so the, the idea here is we need to transcend that our actions are valuable to our actions are valuable, but also our ideas are valuable. And that's a really important thing to distinguish because creating content isn't a value exchange like a traditional transaction. Right, which might be pay me, I'm gonna mow your lawn. The mowing the lawn is the action associated with the value. But now in content, though there's no financial transaction, the ideas are where the value lies. And so we need to think of ourselves as not just our action that is valuable, but our ideas are valuable. So like, let's put this into context. And I learned this from a webinar from like video pro maker or something. Um, so if you had a scale from zero to 10 of any skill set, and let's say you were a six and you're super cool, right? So that would mean regardless of the idea that there are people who are more advanced than you are at whatever this skill is, 
the sevenors, eighters, niners, and tenors, they're probably not gonna learn from you all that much. But there's all of these people underneath you from zero all the way up until you are that would love to learn from your experience. And the cool thing about being a unique expression of life is you're the only one with your perspective. And so it may resonate completely different with other people who even though those other people may have come across the paths of other people who have a similar skill set, you express it in a way that is more relatable to them. So then it, that thinking becomes less competitive in our ideology and that's helpful. When you release the idea of you need to be the best person in the world at whatever it is your, your ideas are, I just think that pressure alleviates and that's helpful for the content creation process. It gives us permission to explore our own ideas. Okay, moving on to it's time consuming. It's time consuming to a point. And I think what a lot of people forget is they want to skip the learning. They wanna go from, I'm not creating any content at all to I've created all of this content very quickly, very streamlined, very efficiently without the stumbles and the falls and the learnings that happen on the meantime. We just want it now, right? And so my encouragement here to alleviate that pressure for me was to always, first of all, set goals small enough that are within reach, but then to give myself room to learn to figure out the processes and to not feel so urgent about that. Some of the most ancient scripts um, and, and ideologies of the world sort of embrace the idea that it just takes as long as it takes. You know, so we have to keep the vision of content creation as efficient, streamlined, relatively quick, and, um, you know, at scale alive in that possibility but it takes as long as it takes to get there and we need to show up consistently and earnestly on that pursuit knowing damn well that it will improve on the journey and i just think that that is really important now let's talk about how the fact that it doesn't affect the bottom line that's the other pressure that we feel because it doesn't right away you know the content game is a long game and community building, which is the byproduct of the content, is a long game. And it's a new, it's new still. And you know, this sort, these sorts of things have only existed in, in technology capacities for a couple of decades. And it's changing all the time. So if it doesn't affect the bottom line right away, what does it affect is sort of the question. And it gives us a process, an active experiential process to express ourselves and improve at expressing ourselves getting better at expressing our ideas our ideas improving because we're expressing them that skill set in and of itself in the process of creating content is valuable it's not just about the content itself either right your experience creating the content itself is valuable okay so we've talked about externalized pressure right we talked about how we use content as a unit of measuring self-worth we released that gotta let that go we talked about how we can find value in our action transcending that to also finding value in our ideas okay we talked about how to shift our mindset from virality to impact. We talked about how we each have a unique perspective, a unique looking glass that will create an opportunity to resonate with a particular subset of people that might be different than the subset of people that will resonate with somebody of a similar skill set or even more advanced. So that unique perspective in and of itself is worth attention. And we talked about how important it is to leave room to learn. And then finally, our last point was that it's really can be used as a tool to express fuller, to express more authentically and radically. Once we do all of those things, you'll notice an inner shift from externalized pressure and weight to intrinsic motivation to express your ideas, um, to feel excited about exploring your your current state of curiosity and exploring the topics and themes that you love and care about and enjoy talking towards then we we, we realize at that point 
Like, if you're listening to a podcast and it's super enticing, for me when that happens, it's usually because the person talking is really, really exploring what they are curious about and what they're excited by. And, and it is contagious, right? And so great content creation lives at the edge of curiosity. So we need to ask ourselves, what am I naturally curious about? That's a question that I think will really catalyze a creative opportunity for content creation. So let's talk about how, how, how important it is that we accept that the content creation process is different for everybody. How much content you're creating is different, what it looks like for you, because we're all at different points of the journey. And it would be silly for me to recommend somebody who is, you know, a uh, solopreneur plumber, uh, who is like, you know, working 12 hours a day already, really struggling with scaling their business, uh, finding employees and systematizing themselves. It would be silly for me to recommend a Alex Hermosi sort of like, you know, 20, 100 pieces of content a week to him because he's at a different phase in the journey, right? So what are the phases? There's the phase of, I've never really done this before, right? You've never really engaged in content creation. This is new for you. Sharing your ideas is new for you. And for you, you just need to get past the emotional process of putting your ideas online. So for you, what I would encourage is to just fucking get started. Po start posting stuff. Post that video of you awkwardly looking in the camera and sharing an idea. Post that first copy idea on LinkedIn. Just get something out there. Once you get to the point where you're, you're feeling comfortable doing that, it's starting to feel easier, then we can systematize your production. We can define, okay, how many posts are we going to do? We're gonna do three posts on Facebook, three posts on Instagram, two posts on LinkedIn, and a post on YouTube every week. And then we can systematize the production process to fulfill those things. And we'll talk more about that. And then once you get to the point where you've got a system, it's up and running, you know, you're meeting that weekly quota on a regular basis, then it's about scaling. Then it's about taking every, every platform and maximizing each one. Alex Ramosi talks about this. He's got a great video on the idea of his media production. If you wanna learn more about it, check that out. So it's just important to know that we're all in a different point of the journey. And so then we need to ask ourselves is where we're at, where are we? Because I feel like we want to, again, skip all the, the messy stuff. We just wanna to go to boom, we've got the platforms at scale got a production efficiency, boom, we're there. But emotionally, expressively, and, and infrastructurally, we can't just turn that on. It's not possible. So we have to ask ourselves, where are we right now? And for a lot of us, we're just at this first phase where we just gotta fucking get something out there. We just gotta get a little bit of motion. A lot of us are good at this, but then we're bad at systematizing it. We're not there yet. And then there's only a select few that have it systematized that are sort of getting to the point where it's time to scale, okay? So assess where you're at. But now content creation is all about creating value, a value exchange. What is value at its core? Because for me, when I'm with somebody who I know I can help in person, it is so much easier to be of value and be of service than when I'm sitting here looking at a camera, scratching my head and sharing my ideas. This feels a little more abstract, but when I'm sitting with somebody, it's so much easier to be of service to them. The question becomes, well, if interaction one-on-one -on -one or one-on-many -on -many or in real life exchange is easier than sitting down in front of a, a, a camera, where am I already giving value? Where is there already value exchange occurring? Could be meetings, could be a conversation, could be a coaching call, could be an event of some kind. Well then how can we capture the value of those events and use them and put them online? And this is like Gary Vee's strategy, the document don't create strategy. And this is the strategy that is significantly more of service for me as a content creator. Though I'm at the point now where I'm exploring what does it look like to give value one to camera as opposed to one to people or person. Um, and that's 
this video is a perfect example of that. But let's go into this. Let's talk about my five step production framework to making content. Because if value lives real time and we're gonna document, this is what that looks like. So first, I capture real time value. I'm, I'm of the believer that value lives real time. So let's capture it. Again, it could be a meeting, it could be an event, it could be a coaching call, whatever it is. Then I organize the capture files. I make sure that it's organize, organized and systemized. Files build up quickly. So if we're not paying attention to how we organize it, things get messy. Then I watch them and I extract highlights from them. Little snippets of value. Okay, then I produce the content and I'll show you exactly what I do and demonstrate what that looks like. And then I distribute it, I publish it to the platforms, right? So capture, organize, extract, produce, publish. Very simple, very streamlined. It's a living process. So it may change as you become more and more comfortable. And this is a really great opportunity to face perfectionism and feelings of imposter syndrome because now you're just observing instead of that abstract, okay, I'm sitting here in front of a camera, what do I talk about? You know, here's the five tips of this. You're looking at how you're already showing up in life. And I don't know about you, but when I look at myself, gosh, that's when my critical mind turns on. That's when I find feel judgmental towards myself or feel negatively towards myself. And so this is a great opportunity to show up to observing your behavior and your sorts of value exchange with the opportunity to become more familiar with it and become more comfortable with it and ease the feelings of perfection and, and imposter syndrome. I'm one of the believers the only way out is through. So again, let's capture the real time conversation. Let's break it down. Uh, it could be meeting, coaching events, calls, um, and you don't need to wait until you have the perfect gear. You know, Alex Ramosi is also a champion of this. And the, that is the idea of your content value is more important than your production quality. Now, in an ideal world, it's good value and good quality. But there's content all over the internet that is very high, high value, poor quality that gets lots of reach. So you don't need to have the perfect gear to get started. Okay, then we organize the files. I have three files within my filing system. I have the raw folder. That's where I put all of the raw footage. So the real capture events. Okay, that's where the file goes first. I look at that raw and I splice up using my video editor. I use Adobe Premiere. I slice up the highlight and then I export the highlight with a title into my highlight bucket. Okay, then a social pack is one week's worth of content. So if my content strategy was three short form real style videos a week, I would take three highlights from my highlight bucket, put it in the social packs and produce the content, right? So that's, here's what that looks like where I take a little highlight, I cut it and I export it. It needs to be a, an idea that is coherent, stands alone and has a start to finish. So it doesn't need context, it's coherent standalone. That's where I name it, throw it in the highlight bucket, Here's an example of one. We have to remember that these algorithms are incredibly advanced and their whole purpose is to capture as much attention for as long as time as possible. That's why they exist. And there's lots of potential manipulative forces that can exist within that principle, right? And so I've talked about this a lot in the context of like, okay, well, we can agree that, let's say Facebook, for example. Facebook is causing a lot of harm in the world. I think we can agree to that. There's a lot of psychological warfare that happens on Facebook. And I think we can also acknowledge Facebook is doing some things to try to eliminate it, but, and it's hard to eliminate something that is so deeply ingrained in the algorithmic principles. But the way that I see it is, I could either go, oh my God, Facebook sucks. I'm gonna avoid their platform. I'm never gonna use it. I'm never gonna invest in them. Or I can go, oh my gosh, all of these people who are habitually sucked into the vortex of Facebook while Facebook is on fire and causing harm. Like I think of this like in the olden days, right? Like, like if there's a castle sort of kingdom and the kingdom is all on fire, am I just gonna get on my horse and like ride past the fire and go, oh, hey, kingdom's on fire. I guess I'm just going to keep moving forward. Or am I going to get on my horse? I'm going to go into the fucking fire and I'm going to try to help as many people as I can. To me, that's what content is. 
It's going into ecosystems that are damaging to the human, human uh, psychology that can be damaging, that have the potential to be damaging and are used as an intentional tool to manipulate and, and, and control. And trying to bring voices to the principle of personal freedom, to the principle of personal empowerment, Right, so there, that's a piece of content, totally raw, okay? So then I take that piece of content, I format it into a 1080 by 1920, sort of a vertical stream. I get rid of the junk, uh, the fluff, the components of it that don't resonate or don't flow very well. Um, but I also want, it to, I want the video itself to flow so I don't get rid of all of the spaces. I add some captions in Adobe Premiere that happens automatically. You just click add captions. Um, and I add any additional flair, like emojis or anything like that. And here's what that looks like. Let's say Facebook, for example. There's a lot of psychological warfare that happens on Facebook. But the way that I see it is I could either go, Facebook sucks, I'm gonna avoid their platform, I'm never gonna use it. Or I can go, oh my gosh, all of these people who are habitually sucked into the vortex of Facebook. I think of this like in the olden days. If there's a kingdom and the kingdom is all on fire, am I just gonna get on my horse, ride? I'd pass the fire and go, oh, hey, kingdom's on fire. Or am I gonna get on my horse, go into the fucking fire, and I'm gonna try to help as many people as I can. To me, that's what content is. It's going into ecosystems that have the potential to be damaging and are used as an intentional tool to manipulate and trying to bring voices to the principle of personal freedom, to the principle of personal empowerment. There you have it, piece of content. So then my team would make seven of these a week and we would distribute them on Facebook, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram, you could even do Pinterest if you wanted. And so that seven pieces of content turns into 28 pieces of content. And just doing that systematically really alleviates a lot of things. So again, that's capture real-time value, organize the files, then extract the highlights, then produce those highlights into short form, and then to publish them. My hope is that this conversation sort of has you feeling and reflecting on why do you create content? What are you inspired to say and what are you curious about? It's important to shift away from viewing content as a unit of self-worth, transcending the idea that my action is valuable to my action is valuable and my ideas are valuable. Shifting your mindset from I want to go viral to I want to make a difference, I want to leave an impact embracing and sharing your unique perspective, allowing room to learn, using it as a tool to express yourself fully. And I think it'll be easy or very quickly, you'll start to notice an intrinsic motivation to share your ideas in a bigger way. So um, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to what I have to say about content. I think what you have to say is really important. And I think what you're working on is really important. And so, if we can embrace that vulnerability and share from an open and honest place while being of service to the world, man, creating content uh, is gonna be a whole heck of a lot more fun. And I hope you have fun while you experiment with this. And I'm here with any questions, please drop a comment if you have questions on how I can be more helpful for you. And uh, let's keep going on the entrepreneurial journey. Content is an important piece. It's not everything. Talk soon.